My name is Michael Hoffman from the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne, Australia, and it's my absolute pleasure to present at this Best of ASCO annual meeting session. I'm here to present the three-year follow-up of the therapy study, a randomised controlled study of lutetium PSMA compared to carbazitaxel in men with castration-resistant prostate cancer. This is a clinician-led study performed by the ANZUP Cancer Trials Group in Australia. Lutetium PSMA 617 is a novel radioligand enabling delivery of high doses of beta radiation to sites of tumour. Patients are first selected with a gallium PSMA 11 PET scan, enabling a whole body image of PSMA expression. If there is sufficient uptake, patients go on to have lutetium-177 PSMA-617 therapy. The pivotal article, the VISION trial, published in the New England Journal of Medicine last year, showing improved overall survival and quality of life with this new agent in men with metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. Therapy was the first randomized controlled trial of lutetium PSMA compared to carbazitaxel. This was a 200 patient study conducted at 11 sites around Australia, results published in The Lancet last year. We showed an improvement in the primary endpoint of PSA 50% response rate of 66% with lutetium PSMA 617 compared to 37% with carbazitaxel, a very large difference in our primary endpoint. Waterfall plots of PSA response shown on the bottom left. But responses were not just limited to PSA, a biochemical response. We saw improvements in radiographic and PSA progression-free survival. By 12 months, almost everyone in the carbazitaxel arm had progressed, only 3% without progression, compared to 19% in the lutetium PSMA 617 arm. Objective response rates by resist, 49% compared to 24%. But despite these markers of improved activity with lutetium PSMA 617, it has lower side effects grade three to four adverse events in 33% with lutetium compared to 53% with carbazitaxel. And that translates to improved patient reported outcomes as we see here, less diarrhea, fatigue, skin rash, hair loss, painful hands and feet, neuropathy and urinary symptoms. Here's the trimal schema. We selected men who had progressed after dose taxol and 91% after a anti-androgen therapy such as enzalutamide and abiraterone. They then underwent a PSMA and FDG PET. 28% were deemed unsuitable, either owing to low PSMA expression at all sites of disease or sites of FDG positive PSMA negative disease. We followed up these patients and I'm pleased to share the outcomes of these patients as well. Patients were randomized one-to-one to, -one to lutetium PSMA or carbazitaxel. However, in the carbazitaxel arm, 15 patients withdrew consent following randomization. These patients wanted to access lutetium PSMA, which was available off trial in Australia. And then post protocol, patients were able to access lutetium PSMA after carbazitaxel, and this occurred in 20% of patients. 21% in the carbazitaxel arm also had further carbazitaxel treatment. In the lutetium arm, 32% had post protocol carbazitaxel whereas only 5% were able to access further lutetium. So there were more patients randomized to the carbazitaxel arm having active post-protocol treatments. In our updated analysis, we also analyzed further PFS, both PSA and radiographic, and results persist in favor of lutetium PSMA with a hazard ratio of 0 0.62, 0 0.62, confident intervals shown there. Again, we note that the median PFS is not very different between the two arms, but there is a separation with time. Because the treatment effect is not constant over time, we elected to use the restricted mean survival time, RMST, when analysing the overall survival endpoint, which was here applied to the PFS results as well. We can see that the RMST with lutetium PSMA was 7.1 months compared to five months with carbazitaxel, confidence intervals as noted non-overlapping. Similar hazard ratios were seen for radiographic and PSA PFS and in a per protocol sensitivity analysis. With regards to overall survival, after three years of follow-up, we were unable to show an improvement in overall survival between the carbazitaxel and lutetium PSMA 617 arms. 
hazard ratio 0.97, P 0.99, RMSTs of 19.1 and 19.6 months respectively. We must bear in mind the post-protocol treatments and also the dropouts in the cabazitaxel arm post-randomization. This was an intention to treat analysis. So if you were randomized to carbazitaxel and received lutetium, you were analyzed as if you had lutetium 177. However, in a per protocol analysis, accounting for lower power because of the dropouts, still no difference in overall survival was seen. Importantly, with three year follow-up, no new safety signals were seen in the lutetium PSMA 617 arm. We also followed up the patients who were eligible by all other criteria, but then were excluded after PSMA and FDG PET. These were 80 patients or 28%, and 61 of these 80 consented for ongoing follow-up. And we could see their survival on the red curve compared to carbazitaxel and lutetium. The RMST in this group was significantly shorter at 11 months compared to 18 months in the randomized group. Only half these patients went on to receive carbazitaxel. They were all eligible for, by, for carbazitaxel by trial criteria. And I think this shows us the real world utilization of carbazitaxel off protocol. Because of its side effects, referrers and patients sometimes do not like using it. The strengths of this study are, we now have three years follow-up on a prospective randomized multi-center study. We chose an active control arm compared to the vision trial, which had a relatively inactive control arm, actually similar to the 2019 New England Journal publication of carbazitaxel, which compared to crossover anti-androgen therapy. The CART trial showed significantly improved overall survival with carbazitaxel, and this trial shows that results are similar with lutetium. However, our ability to evaluate overall survival was limited by post-protocol crossover and withdrawals post-randomization in the carbazitaxel arm. It's important to note that therapy was never powered to evaluate for overall survival. Nevertheless, the clinical implications of this study are that lutetium PSMA is more active than carbazitaxel through multiple measures, not just PSA, but also radiographic PFS and CT resist. We see a similar OS, which is a life prolonging therapy, but with significantly fewer adverse events and patient reported outcomes. I'd like to briefly discuss PSMA as a predictive biomarker. This is work presented at ASCO GU earlier in the year. In the therapy study, we looked at the SUV mean, which is the average intensity of uptake on the PSMA PET scan within tumor, and also the metabolic tumor volume on the FDG PET. And what we showed is that the odds ratio of a response to lutetium versus carbazitaxel was sixfold higher, being 12.2 compared to 2.2, if you were in the group of patients that have very high PSMA expression and SUV mean over 10. Strikingly, if you were in this group of men with high PSMA expression and you were randomized to lutetium PSMA, you had a 91% likelihood of responding being a PSA over 50% response rate. So PSMA, as assessed on gallium PSMA PET, appears to be a predictive and prognostic biomarker. In conclusion, the therapy data supports the choice of lutetium 177, PSMA 617, over carbazitaxel for patients with PSMA positive, progressive MCRPC after docetaxel and an androgen receptor pathway inhibitor. On the basis of its higher PSA response rates, greater PFS benefit, quality of life benefits, favorable safety profile and dosing schedule, six weekly rather than three weekly with similar survival outcomes. Additionally, survival was considerably shorter for patients excluded on PSMA and FDG PET owing to either low PSMA expression or discordant disease. There are many people to acknowledge for the therapy trial. Firstly, I'd like to thank the Prostate Cancer Foundation of Australia for financially supporting this trial, together with input from Movember. We had industry support from ABX, who became Endocyte, now Novartis, and Lutetium 177, no carrier added, was provided by Anstow. This trial was designed and conducted by the ANZUP Cancer Trials Group 
in collaboration with the NHNMRC Clinical Trial Centre at the University of Sydney and the Australasian Radiopharmaceutical Trials Network. I'd like to particularly thank the patients and their support networks, and also all the co-investigators around Australia. This was a great partnership of nuclear medicine doctors working with medical oncology doctors and clinical trials staff to execute this incredible trial. Thank you so much.